Thank you, Liam. Uh, there's no pressure or anything like that. Well, I, I want to keep this uh, pretty, pretty, pretty casual as well. I know I'm keeping everyone from, from the drinks and the actual networking that's happening out there. Um, I got some notes. I wrote some things down. Liam, Liam did ask me to speak here, which was, which was great. I love talking about networking and getting to know people in the industry. I didn't realize it was an hour when he first uh, came to me, so it might, be, it might be a bit short, but that's fine. We can actually just put the practical networking to effect out there pretty quickly after I talk. Um, look, uh, just to also clarify this as well, like the, the advice and the anecdotes and the stories and the things that I say, uh, don't take them as gospel. Uh, I might be wrong. What works for me and what I've seen might not work for you or might work for you differently or whatnot. Everyone has their own unique ways of actually connecting and meeting people and talking to people. So just because I say, I think it should be this way, you should talk to someone this way, you should outreach like this, don't, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm 100% right, okay? So take this as advice or, you know, just, just not gospel to heart, cool? All right. And also, just I should probably qualify this a little bit, like my qualifications, why I'm standing here talking about networking. Yes, I'm the content manager for PAX Australia. Who here is going to PAX Australia, by the way? Excellent, good. I won't ask anyone who's not to put up their hands, at, hands up, but I'd be very annoyed. Um, before, uh, before this, uh, for the last 15 years, I've been involved in the gaming industry in all different areas of it. I was a, a developer for a while at Sega Creative Assembly. I was a journalist, started up a independent gaming website, Australian Gamer, which got uh, bought out by Game Planet, so I wrote about games. Uh, I then created a, a video game cocktail bar called The Manor Bar in Brisbane and Melbourne, so obviously a lot of, of uh, networking opportunities there. Uh, I had a short-lived gaming TV show with Yahtzee from Zero Punctuation, uh, and then more recently I started uh, MCV Pacific, which is the game industry trade publication as the sales and marketing manager. And now here I am as the content manager for PAX Australia and also Oz Comic Con. So throughout the years of doing all these events and whatnot, I have a little bit of experience with networking and meeting and talking to and outreaching to other people and also seeing other people network and talk and outreach and, and do all this kind of thing. So hopefully I can give a little bit of advice or, or suggestions and feedback. Also in terms of Q&A, like if anyone's got a question while I'm talking, I'm actually kind of keen. Just put your hand up and actually ask as we go, all right? So we won't leave it all to the end. If you've got a particular thing that you want to ask more about, I'm happy to actually talk about it. Otherwise, we'll talk about it afterwards during the drinks. Also, networking and drinks. Let's just get this out of the way. You do not have to drink to network. This is like a perception amongst the gaming industry, uh, every industry I suppose, but you do not have to drink in order to partake in networking drinking opportunities. Okay, that's, I think there's a, there's a little bit of a myth that I certainly perpetuate as well, which is you need to be able to get drunk and talk to people like we you let your inhibitions down and whatnot, you don't have to drink. You need to be comfortable around other people who are drinking, but you don't need to drink. No one is going to treat you or look at you differently if you don't especially here in Australia. What is networking? Networking is just meeting other people to exchange information, ideas, usually to your benefit. You're looking to actually meet and talk to people to further the opportunities and the, the games that you're developing or whatnot and get more information from them and to find out ways that they can actually help you. It's not always about making friends. You can absolutely make friends in the industry. This is a wonderful, inclusive industry, and there are multiple opportunities to actually meet people and make that connection and be friends with people. Networking is not always about that. And a lot of the times, it's just about the opportunities to actually, that you get from people who are in certain positions where you can get along or find some mutual collaborative opportunity to share together. So that's, that's an important note to make. And on that note, when networking, I guess, like a, if there was going to be, if I prepared anything, it would be like a rule number one, a be yourself or be someone else. But make the choice between the two. Either be yourself, be this is who I am and I'm going to talk to people and meet them and this is, I'm quite honest and comfortable in these scenarios and situations and talking, or be someone else. And when I say that, my name is Guy Blomberg, but my nickname is Yug. And when I'm out and about at social events or whatnot, usually I'll, in the, I'll have a mindset of actually switching into this yug persona, this person who drinks a lot of tequila and actually collaborates and brings people together to you know, gather them and whatnot. I'm very much more outgoing uh, and 
just in that crazy kind of mode, that, that young persona. That works for me very much, over the, with a hat. My default persona is Guy. Absolutely. Like, uh, when I'm at home, I am Guy. When I'm talking to people, I am Guy. Yug is the persona I put on when I'm in a crowd. That is my networking persona. I guess that's what I'm saying. Is like, either be yourself or be someone else if you have, you know, certain uh, issues or anxieties or whatnot. If it helps you to actually put on a persona in those networking environments, then do that. That's fine. The only thing you shouldn't be is disingenuous. So, like, you know, trying to actually say a bunch of things that aren't true or, uh, you know, when you're going down that particular path as that other person, uh, don't lie and don't pretend to know things that you don't know anything about. Uh, I guess in that respect as well, confidence, not arrogance. Don't be going up to people and meeting them and actually claiming to know more than they do or engaging in a conversation and toning yourself down, or, you know, being uh, aggressive or, or saying certain things, be very humble when talking to other people because you never know who those people are. We'll get onto that in a second. I guess the other one is on Facebook or social media. If you actually present yourself as a certain person, try and actually be that person when you meet people in real life as well. That's what people will expect. Let's, let's talk about the games industry specifically. I think it's very important in all the different fields and all the different people I've talked to and met uh, to understand the differences in the gaming industry. There should be a... Oh, can I grab a water, Liam? Just, I'm very parched. The beer was warm. <laughs> Understanding the basics, the... Oh, thank you. Strong man. <laughs> Much better. The differences between a developer a publisher and a distributor. One of the most upsetting things that I ever saw was down in Sydney. The managing director of Ubisoft, Australia, New Zealand, is a guy called Ed Fong, an amazing person with over 20 years in the, in the industry and a wealth of knowledge and information and has actually worked with a lot of smaller startups and to help them with uh, marketing and promoting. Now, this is not someone specifically that can actually acquire or help smaller indie developers, but someone with an amazing amount of knowledge. And I was at a, a, uh, a meet and greet event at SAE with all the students there, and Ed was there, and all the questions he got asked by all the people there were about the next Assassin's Creed game. Oh, tell, me, tell us more about this. Is this character gonna be in it? Is, you know, what, it will, what will the multiplayer options be? What consoles will it be on? To which, gracefully, like all his responses, like that's a, that's a great, question for Ubisoft Montreal, the developers or whatnot. I am the, pu I am the managing director of the publisher, and accordingly, these are the kind of questions you should be asking me. So I think that's, that's just an important one about the basics of the gaming industry. Sure, you're looking to actually get into game development, but there are so many different facets, and especially when you're at networking events or gatherings, there's going to be developers, distributors, publishers, content creators, like the gamut of people. You should have at least a basic understanding of the industry that you're getting yourselves into. Uh, rule number two, I would say, is, and all of this is applying to actually physically meeting people in uh, social environments as well. We'll get to, get to online in a sec. Make an effort. Make, a, make an effort. And that, this, this applies to so many different levels. First of all, be presentable. It's not, it's not hard. I'm not saying you need to suit and tie it. I hate suit and, suit and tie. That's, that would be terrible. But just make a bit of an effort if you're going to go out into a social scenario. You could actually even go to a bit of extra effort. If you're going to an event, you can check the guest list and actually see who else is going to be there. You can do a little bit of research. If there's a way to actually find out, well, there's going to be this group of people here. This is fascinating. I've always actually wanted to meet or greet or see these people. You're going to know ahead of time who they are and if they're going to be there. That's super important. Ask questions of the people you meet. When you meet someone for the first time, when you go up to them at, a, at an event or whatnot, you know, hi, I'm, I'm such and such, and you are fantastic, it's wonderful to meet you. Can you tell me, what, what are you doing here? You know, what, 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 what kind of projects are you working on lately? Can you tell me more about yourself? Ask questions. Get them to actually talk about what they're doing. Listen intently. Again, be humble. Going back to what I was saying before, don't be arrogant and chime in. Well, that's nice that you're doing that, but I'm actually doing this. Don't ever go down that particular road. Don't, this one might be a bit controversial. I truly believe this. Don't apologize. 
I'm not saying if you do something terrible, like throw up on them, or I don't know, like pour a glass. If you do something that's worth apologizing for, apologize, hands down. But like in general with your language and when you talk to people, you don't need to just apologize just for talking or being there. Don't say, I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to. You don't need to apologize unless you do something terrible. But like in general, try and stay away from that particular language with talking people. You don't. You have nothing to apologize for yet. Absolutely have business cards on you, or at least contact detail cards, anything on you at all times, that if someone asks you, you can give it out to them. It doesn't need to be some like professional American psycho kind of, you know, full-on <laughs> business cards. Like it can be just on a piece of paper with, you know, a, a fun piece of art that actually represents you or what you do or who you are. Because I guarantee at the end of every conference or networking event, when I come back, I've got a stack of business cards. I will, and I know a lot of other people will, like, I will flick through them. I will actually, oh, that's, yeah, no, that's right, I remember that person. I'm not saying every time I'll actually contact those people, but there is no way you'll actually even get an in without a piece of contact information. I, I can't stress that enough. It drives me mad, the exhibitors who go to PAX, who are on their booths, or any developers that actually showcase anywhere. If you're, if you're ever showing, showing your game off anywhere, have a piece of physical media, whether it be a business card or a link that someone can actually grab and take away with them. I, I just can't stress that one enough. There's not much else I can say for that. Also, a business card is a great easy exit from any conversation before it gets too awkward, right? So if you're talking, it's like, hey, how are you? It's like, yeah, good. This, this, and this, and they're like, yep, yep, you know, very short answers, like, great, okay, no worries, excellent, look, uh, if, if, I'd love to talk to you about this later, do you have, do you have a card? Yes, here's, uh, here's my card as well. It's just a very nice, professional, easy out from a conversation, I highly recommend it. I guess uh, the, re the reason that story comes up as well is there are wonderful people in this industry that, you know, will, uh, will go out of their way to actually network and talk and things like that, but understand and try and, and, and I guess, read the language of some people, especially at... Uh, you know, drinking events or whatnot. Uh, some people might not necessarily want to actually talk about things, which is fine. But the last thing you want to do is leave a lasting bad impression. Don't be too paranoid about that. Don't ever actually go to something and go, oh, that went terribly. I hardly talked to anyone. This will never work ever again. Pick yourself up and go to, go to, go to more. Don't ever actually think that it's over. It's never over. But have some nice outs from, from conversations where you can actually leave in a dignified way. Rule number three, and this is the, I, I've kept saying this, but again, I, I guess I want to like really highlight it, is be humble. Don't dismiss anyone at an event as being unimportant, okay? You never know, not just who you're actually talking to and what their role may be, but you never know who they're going to be either. You never know who they will be down the track. I've been in the Australian industry now for about 15 years, and there are people that I have met very early on that, you know, uh, that now, uh, uh, if, I was, if I was to say one brilliant example, uh, the very first event that I actually went to as a journalist was an EA Imagine event in Sydney, uh, where I met and got into a really good conversation with a guy called Andrew Wilson, who was the sports manager at EA at the time. Uh, and, you know, just starting out this gaming website, asked him a whole bunch of advice and feedback, and it was great, like, you know, had a great conversation, kept in correspondence with him, over the years. He's now the managing director of EA, EA, global sort of thing. That's that kind of connection, that, that opportunity would, there's no way that would ever be, you know, uh, something that would be available to me now, but I still corresponded with him, you know, and ask him questions and not as often, obviously, he's quite busy and so am I, but still, like, never dismiss the person who's standing right next to you at a networking event. Uh, I think that's, very important. Give everyone a chance. Uh, try not to just chat to the one person all night. That's something else I see. As soon as you actually meet someone who you get along with and, you know, oh, they're, they're a familiar person or we've got a good dialogue or whatnot. I see p people who will then get, get into a comfortable groove and just talk to that one person all night. It's a great opportunity to actually say, do you know anyone else? Here, are there other people that we could actually talk to? Are there people that you could actually introduce me to? Again, like that person might not have been someone who you'd zeroed in on, 
but they are people that know other people in the industry that can actually, again, keep introducing, keep actually meeting and greeting and whatnot. As students, which I imagine most of you are, right, uh, you know, the amount of people who you're going to graduate with in the years when you graduate, I guarantee in five, ten years' time, those people, if you try and keep those connections and friendships, they will, there will be people in your graduating class who you will want to know five or ten years down the, time, uh, down the track. Uh, and that's something that's quite important. Uh, I guess the other thing I want to say in regards to actually, don't dismiss anyone, uh, when you're actually talking to people, be humble. Try and actually figure out how you can help that person that you're talking to. When you're actually in a conversation, asking questions, asking questions, your answer, if it's not another question, should be, is there any way that I can actually contribute to this conversation in a way that would be valuable to this person that I'm talking to? Is there, is there th things that I can actually bring to the table here? Now, it's, you might not be a AAA developer or like a game developer with 15 years experience, but you might have a different take on something, a different opinion on something, you know, something that would be interesting to bring to that conversation. Always try and think, you know, how can I actually help the person that I'm actually talking to in this conversation? Because that's going to make that person want to actually keep in touch with you after that chat. Uh, again, starting with the people you know, grow from there. Uh, make friends now, I guess pay it forward. Last rule that I particularly want to touch on is to follow up. Uh, again, this is something that not enough people actually do, and I don't know whether it's because you, you get a list afterwards and it's overwhelming or you're not sure if there's any benefit to actually following up with the people you talk to. Uh, Sending an email follow-up is so easy and much rarer than you'd think. Uh, you know, just, just a, hey, look, it was great to actually meet you, see you, get your business card, uh, makes a huge difference. There, there is so much benefit to actually doing that. And it doesn't need to just be email. Obviously, you know, add them on LinkedIn. You can, sit, you can add them on Facebook if you feel you've gotten to that particular point, and certainly follow on Twitter. Twitter is a very easy way to actually continue to, actually, to engage in conversations with people after you've been to a, to a networking event. You know, add these people to lists, actually follow the hashtag. They're very, people are very open on, on Twitter. People will talk about absolutely anything. You could actually hit up every single person in the, in the Australian games industry, I guess the international games industry, and just follow what they're what they're saying and what their conversations are, and you can jump in and engage. And more importantly, when you meet them in the future or you go to an event where they're at, it's going to be very easy to strike up a conversation. You know, oh, I saw you were talking about this or you watched this movie the other day. Oh, I love that as well. What do you think about this, this, and this? Like, if you pay attention and do the research and be prepared, it'll be very easy to actually talk more comfortably and also be more memorable to the people that you talk to in these situations. So Facebook, uh, like personally, I love Facebook. Uh, I add everyone I possibly can. I think I've got like 4,000 friends, and that's not a brag. I'm not friends with most of them. It's just <laughs> much, it's, it creates an opportunity at any point to actually reach out to so many people or make a post that so many people within the industry can actually see. I add everyone I can. Uh, and the other one is LinkedIn. LinkedIn, critically important for people, after you've actually networked with someone or you look them up or you want to know about them, the first place you'll go is LinkedIn to actually find out if they can back up their claims. Make sure your LinkedIn is up to date and actually lists as much as humanly possible. That's, that's pretty much it. I gotta, I gotta be honest, in terms of just advice and things like that, uh, you know, I'd like to, to think that after this we can go out and have a couple of drinks and some of you can put this to practical applications and whatnot. Uh, if you've got any questions, please ask me out, 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 out there as well. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for having me and good luck in the future. Thank you.